Good afternoon, everyone. We're just going to go into a time of praise and worship. Can I just kindly ask um, that we all mute our mics um, so that there's no disruption? But even though your mics are muted, please feel free to join in and worship God with me. Can everyone hear this? Just do a thumbs up if you can hear my awesome. We're just going to be singing, Our God is greater, He's awesome in power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You are greater, you are mighty, you are all powerful. What are you turned into wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Mm -hmm. Isn't our God great? Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he awesome in power? Isn't he the healer? Come on, just worship God with me this afternoon. Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Come on, sing our God Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you were higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you were higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Come on. Now we're going to sing, if our God is for us, then who can be against us? And as we sing that, I want you to sing that as though you believe that, that our God is fighting all our battles. And if he's for us, then what can stand against us? And if our God is for us, then who can never stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who can never stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who can never stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who can never stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Stand against. What can stand against? Stand against. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you were higher than any other. God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you were higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who can never stop us? And if our God is with us, 
Then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then what can never stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Stand against. And what can stand against? Stand against. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Come on, sing that. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God's you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God, our God. Come on, worship God. Just say that to him. He's our God. I'm going to sing one other song. We're going to say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come fill this place and fill the atmosphere. I'm just going to sing that and sing this beautiful melody onto our Lord this afternoon. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're a living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves when the heart becomes free and the shame is undone. In your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, Come clock this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Amen. Your presence, Lord. Thing There's nothing worth more that can ever come close. Nothing can compare. You are living on your presence, Lord. Have to see the seed of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and the shame is undone. In your presence, Lord, I want to say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flow this place and fill the hour. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence. Come on, help me sing this. Your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of 
Please accept our worship. Please accept our praise. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we have praise and for in Jesus' name we have worshiped. Amen. Amen. Awesome, awesome. Father, we thank you and we give you praise for that awesome time of worship. Hallelujah. Our hearts are ready to receive all that God has for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, we welcome Sister Adeola to welcome all of us here. Praise. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today. It's a pleasure to once again be glad, be in the presence of God and also to enjoy fellowship with blessed women of God. You are indeed welcome to today's Assured Women Fellowship. Um, dear BSPs, um, it is an honor to be here to welcome you because this is indeed going to be an unusual gathering in line with the theme for today, which is Singles Allowed. The promise for the year for the church has been it's been our, it is our year of a new song. And indeed, we are, from personal experiences, sang new songs at various points in our lives this year. And as we enter into the court, as we are in the last quarter of the year, I'm sure that there's no better time to shout out aloud to the Lord in thanksgiving for all he has done and for all that he will do. Um, Every time that there's this gathering, it's an opportunity for us to learn from the Bible about women who have obeyed God, done his will, and the learning points from it. And every time that we attend this service, it's an opportunity for us to become better women, to become better women for Christ, representing Christ all over the world. I welcome you to this service today. I pray that indeed people's needs will be met, um, the oppressed will be set free, there will be liberation. And I want to crave your indulgence to come in with the right attitude expecting from God. Blessed are you amongst women, blessed are the fruit of your womb. And so indeed, you will not be here without being blessed in Jesus' name. You are welcome in Jesus' name. So I think I'm going to move over to the high speaking session. Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome once again. So we're going to do something really interesting now. Um, and I believe, God, that we will all do this in a way that will, um, so that we get to know one another. You know, with Zoom, it can be quite awkward. You know, we see little thumbnails, but we don't know who is who. So what's going to happen is that um, uh, there are names on, if you're able, I don't know if you're on, um, if you're on, uh, on your, what would I call it, um, on your tablet, chances are that, chances are that, you know, you, you probably see only four people, but I'm going to use my own screen because I can see a bit more, and I'm going to start with calling the names that I have, so if I call you, 
please just very quickly, you can unmute yourself then. Tell us who you are. And then what you do is then you now call somebody else from your own screen. So please, we all have to be careful. We can't call someone that has been called before because we have to call someone different, okay? And whoever you've called from your own screen, that person will just come and say who their name, who they are, and anything interesting. What we're actually asking you to say is, um, praise the Lord. What we're asking you to say is to tell us, we're asking you to tell us what your favorite um, song is, what your favorite, or what your favorite scripture is, or what your favorite phrase is. Very short, and tell us why, you know. So I'm going to start with myself, okay. By God's grace, my name is Pastor Ugochi Agwasimelo, the pastor of Fountain of Life Church, London. And my favorite phrase is this, that you're running a race that you're destined to win. Because I know that we're all in a journey as children of God, and we're all running a winning race. We are no child of God is a loser. We're all winners. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to mute myself while I hand over to Vera Tawia. I'll mute. Hi, my name is Vera Tawia. I was on with my grandson and obviously I had to let him go before I could unmute. Um, Bemi invited me. She's a dear friend of mine, a sister actually. And one of my favorite scriptures is Philippians 4. Um, I like it from verse 6 all the way to verse 8 where it talks about rejoicing in the Lord always. I just think it's such an amazing scripture because especially in these times, sometimes you look around and it looks like there's nothing to rejoice about, but the Bible commands us to rejoice. And then the Bible goes on to say about thinking about whatsoever things are of a good report. Amen. And so I'm very encouraged by Philippians 4. And I, I just like to encourage my sisters by that fantastic scripture. So I'll call Benny since she's the only person I know. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bemi Olagudu. Um, my favorite scripture says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That is a good promise from God that no matter what I'm going through, is there. So when I call upon him, he answers. So I trust in him in totality. So in every situation, he's always with me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So I call on Sister Titi Adeyemi. Hello, good afternoon, sisters VSP. Uh, my name is um, Titi Adeyemi. I'm a mother of three and a wife. Um, my favorite um, scripture, passage in the Bible is Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That is my favorite um, passage in the Bible, especially with what we are going through in this troublesome uh, world nowadays, you know, with what's going on in Nigeria, with the pandemic, um, as a child of God, because we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, He will always, you know, protect us. And every morning when I'm doing my morning prayer, I always read that um, Sam, even my children know that is my favorite. Like they all read it as well. They know it all fade now. So I thank God Almighty for his words that continue to dwell in me and my family and all of us all. Hallelujah. I call upon Sister Molunga. Sister Molunga. Molunga. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Hello. Good morning, everyone. I uh, was invited this morning by my big sister, Auntie, well, she's Auntie Bemi to me. Um, she's family, my family. Um, I just want to say thank you for inviting me. Uh, this is my first time. Um, what is my favorite scripture? 
It's uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, which says, um, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, um, plans to prosper you and not harm you, um, and plans to give you hope uh, for the future. I, this is something that has uh, led me throughout the journey uh, of my life, and I continuously go, it just helps me through my journey thus far, and um, it just gives me the greatest of hope um, in all areas of my life. I've lost so much and so much uh, in terms of family, um, but I continue to be grateful, and I'm just, I'm grateful for just having the this morning and congregation with you all today, but um, I am now going to call upon uh, Auntie Dorothy Njoku to take over. Thank you all. Have a good day. Good morning or good afternoon. I'm Dorothy in Joko. My favorite scripture is, with God, all things are possible. Whatever it is on earth and with God, it is possible. I am the mother to Pastor Oguchi, <laughs> the pastor in London, and I'm delighted to be in this conference this afternoon. God bless you. And let us remember that with God, all things are possible. Thank you. Um, let's see. I call on Yeti B. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Grandma D. Uh, my name is Yeti Banjoko, and my favorite scripture is Leviticus 26.9 which says, I, I, I target the scripture for my life. I've known and loved the scripture for a very long time. Um, and it says, I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers and keep my covenant with you. That B part is the part that I love the most. God, for me, over my life, my very short life, God has kept every covenant, every step of the way. Just when I think it's over, he's right there to pull me through to the next level. That's it. So that's me done. I'll call on Dr. Chichi. I'll call on you. She knows who I mean. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I have lots of names. My name is Toby Chinire Odukoya Enuha. And my uh, one of my favorite scriptures, because I have quite a lot, is Philippians 1 6 that says, I am confident of this. He who has started a good thing will be faithful to complete it. Um, so that's one of the scriptures that I hold really dear. And the person I'm going to call on now is Pastor Tolu Ijogu. Um, and she just even said my scripture because my favorite scripture is Philippians 1 6. In fact, that was my scripture for the year. And she said, Being confident in this thing that he who has begun this good work is faithful to complete it. It is a scripture that has taken me through so many hurdles in my life because I know that God keeping me alive today means that he has started something and by his grace and his mercy, he will complete it. And I'm so glad to be online with everyone today. I would like to call Tilaya next. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Oh, afternoon. Um, like Pastor Toby said, um, I have many favorite scriptures, but my ultimate favorite would be Romans 18 and 19. And it goes, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And it's 19, that's particularly um, one that holds dear to me. So it says, for the creation waits in eager ex expectation for children of God to be revealed. 
And it just, and it says, and 20 also says, for the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its choice, but by the will of the one who subjected in hope that creation itself will be liberated from bondage. And it carries on. Um, and it just reminds me daily to live a life full of purpose because it reminds me that Talaya, you were created and put on this earth for a reason. And not only is that reason important for you to fulfill for yourself, but it's for the earth to also benefit from the reason why God put you here. Because God hasn't just put any one of us here just because he was bored. Um, there was a reason. So it reminds me daily that you live a you living a life full of purpose, full of destiny, full of um full of meaning. Um so not to waste any day. So that's my favorite one one of my favorites. I'm gonna call her my auntie, Auntie Yomi on Avanjo. Hello everyone. Thank you very much, Tilayo. My name is Yomi on Obanjo. I'm glad to be here this morning or afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. It's morning here. Um, my favorite scripture, or one of my favorite scriptures, it's third John from verse two to verse five. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospereth. I think this passage is all encompassing and it speaks of God's intention, you know. He wishes me well, he wishes my family well, he wishes my nation well, he wishes the church of Christ well. So God's intention towards us is a very good one. And he talks about it all, that we prosper, be in good health, even as our soul prospereth. And I'd also like to chip in. My favorite expression is to be intentional. I'm sure my children know me to say this all the time, be intentional, whatever I have to do in life, I have to put my heart to it, be more intentional. And I believe through that, we get the best result. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to call Pastor Bisoy. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bisoye Koli. I'm from Fountain of Life Church, Nigeria. Um, one of my favorite scriptures or phrases would be, our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works within me. Nice to see everyone. I will now call on Sister Adiola. Hello, sorry about that. I was trying to unmute my phone. Good afternoon, everyone. My favorite scripture at the moment is Psalm 3, verse 3. And it's a scripture that I sing all the time. Thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory and the lifter of my head. It's a scripture that comforts me. It's a scripture that gives me hope. And um, it's a scripture that motivates me at different times. I call on <sighs> what is going on? I call on um sorry. It's just technology. I call on Sister Desh. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Adesh Alamua, sorry, but people call me Lady Desh. Um, my favorite scripture is from John 10, one of my favorite scriptures from John 10, 10. He says um, the, the team has come to kill, to kill and to destroy, but God has come to give life and give it more abundantly. But um, if you go through the team, it says God has come to give me everything in abundance, meaning I have everything I want, be it health, be it spiritual, 
be fine and shall have everything in full. So that scripture keeps me going, and um, it keeps me. Uh, it keeps reminding me that um, I, I, I I don't need to lack anything. Whatever I want, I don't need to lack anything. So that's one of my favorite scripture. I'm going to call on Sister Ayosh Shunaike. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can I first of all thank uh, Yisundi Banjoko for inviting me to the Zoom meeting. Um, I have to apologize that I did come attend a bit late. Um, so, but I, I think I picked up the flow of what's going on. So my favorite scripture is Isaiah 41 verse 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I'll uphold you with the right with my righteous uh, right hand. This scripture is a comfort to me. It was something that I, I want to say discovered when I was going through a very difficult time in my life. And um, I believe, I, I can't even remember how I, I found the scripture, but it was such a comfort to me at the time that I remember reading it for the first time and just breaking down and crying because it was as if God, and I'm sure most of you ladies would have had the same experience when you read a scripture and you feel as if it was written for you at that particular time and God had you in mind. So every time I even refer back to the scripture, I, 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 um, I'm going through a difficult time. I read it and I really do feel God's spirit, his presence. And I know that he has me in mind or on his mind. And so it is one of my utmost favorite scriptures because it encompasses any sort of situation that you're going through. Um, now, I'm not sure who has been called already. So um, if, I, if I call you and you've been called again, please, Hi, hi. Just, just to jump in um, there. Sorry. Just because we're, no, no, thank you very much for that. Just because we're just being a bit mindful of the time and um, what I'm going to do, if it's OK, I'm going to just call um, the ladies on the call, on the line who I know haven't been called. And if you just, mind, thank you. Um, just letting us know your name and um, your favourite scripture, just so that we can get through everybody and continue with the agenda. So I'm going to call on let me see who hasn't been called yet. Um, Favoured. Hello. 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 Hi. Good afternoon. I just joined in and I think. I... Good afternoon. If you could tell us your name and your favorite script, that would be great. Am I supposed to do like. Okay. So, okay. So my name is Nena and um, I live in Nigeria. My favorite scripture, I was invited by my um, dad's sister to this. So this is the first time I'm, I'm joining in. Okay, so my favorite um, scripture is Philippians 4 verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It's um, a verse that has helped me through um, a difficult patch that I've been going through this um, past month. And I, I keep reassuring myself that, I, that indeed I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to go to Titi Adeyemi. If you don't mind unmuting yourself, letting us know your name and your favorite scripture, please. Sorry, I've introduced myself earlier. Oh, apologies. Ap apologies. Um, Daffe, if you could unmute yourself and let us know your favorite scripture. Good afternoon, everyone. My favorite scripture is um, John 14, 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. I think we can literally ask God for anything. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Daphne. Ruth? Ruth Obasa? Pastor Margaret? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I got invited uh, from Pastor Ugochi, our favorite Pastor You. God bless you for inviting me. I feel uh, really, really blessed to be in the presence of everyone here. I'm from Covenant God Ministries International Church, uh, based in London, in Edmonton. And my favorite scripture is Isaiah 54. Uh, which um, I actually got 
directly from God when I was actually going through my own challenging time. And uh, I'll actually stress on from verse 1 to 8, but mostly on verse 4. And ever since then, I've been richly, richly blessed from there because each time I look back into my life from now, from when I've been in UK and up till now, God indeed, I've actually um, proclaimed every scripture all the way. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Margaret. I'm going to go to my personal person, Munachiso Arthur. Hallelujah. Thank God. Um, so my name is Chico um, and uh, my favourite scripture has already been said but um, there's a scripture I've been meditating on that says how much more your father in heaven who will give you all things if you ask um, and it just shows how much God loves us and how, grac how gracious he is towards us that anything we ask for in his name he will give us. Amen. Thank you, Chiso. Gonna to go to Lily. Hi, my name is um, Lily and uh, I've been invited by Bimmy. I've been to your know, fountain events before. Amen, thank you for inviting me. Um, I have two children, um, Atusa and Azita. The phrase I like is that um, we're all uh, children of God from all races, all nations, all colors. God loves us as one. Um, there is no difference in heaven and earth. Um, we're all loved by one. So um, I'm a humble servant of his, and um, I think God is everything in my life. And um, I'm truly blessed by everyone I meet in my life. And um, Bimi is like a sister to me. I love her more than life itself. <laughs> so, um, yeah, God is good. And every day we're at a test. I believe that. Um, judgment Day is here. We are tested every day by the grace of God and his creation is good. Lovely to meet you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lily. Um, Lady, Lady Tilaya, yeah. just a second. Um, we are really going to keep to time. And sure. I know that there are quite a number of people who haven't introduced themselves, but I just want to reassure you that there are going to be a, there's going to be a breakout session and you're going to have time to introduce yourselves to, you know, the people that you're with in the breakout session, okay? So we will stop exactly in the next three minutes. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to give the opportunity to as many as six people in the next three minutes, just to say your name, your favorite scripture, and just, you know, and um, Lady Tilayo would call somebody else, all right? Um, because in exactly um, three minutes, we'll go into the breakout session. God bless you all. Thank you. Sure, no problem. I invite Galaxy. Um, I'm going to call on Bola Adejobi. This is Bola Adejobi, that's my auntie. Um. My favorite scripture is, this is Bola Adejobi, my favorite scripture is Psalm 139, verse 5. He has edged me behind and he has edged me in front and his hand is upon me directing every step that I take. I've added a bit of mine, but that's my favorite scripture. Uh, invited by Bene, my sister Bene. God bless you. Uh, and I really need to step out now, but God bless you all. Thank you. Um, well, next, Bene Ni. I'm going to ask Sister Vic Gloria. Okay. Hello. Good morning from here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good morning from here. I was invited by Pastor Gochi Abasimelo, and I'm watching from New Jersey. My favorite scripture is First Peter five seven. And he says, casting all your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm watching here with my boss. God bless you all. God bless you, Sister Gloria. I'm going to ask Pastor Unity, and then we will go into the breakout session. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much. 
Uh, my name is Pastor Unity Benebeka. I was invited by Pastor Ugochi. I call her my mommy. She's so wonderful. My favorite scripture really is, um, I've got so much, but Philippians 1.6, for some reason, I can't get off that. And it says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you, we complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. It, I just resonate with this scripture because it says, being confident, he who has begun. None of us initiated our creation or our presence or anything about us. So whether I see an atheist, a Christian, an unbeliever, whosoever I meet, I believe that scripture is for everybody. It just shows that God has begun a good work in everyone. No matter what we are seeing now, no matter what, how they manifest now, but let's be encouraged that God has begun a good work. He initiated it. He will complete it. So let's just cooperate. So for me, I, it just reminds me to say, you, need, you know what? Just let God be. And I, I just charge everyone this afternoon to say, listen, God has begun a good work in you and your situation. He also will bring it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. He will not abandon us. He's at it and he's faithful. Very dependable and reliable. God bless you all. The Lord, thank you so much, Pastor Unity. I'm just yes. going to introduce the topic and we'll and we'll all go into our breakout sessions. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So um today we're going to, by God's grace, look at Hannah in the Bible. And we uh, are going to look at quite a long portion of scripture, and that is looking from um, 1 Samuel chapter 1 to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 11. So all of chapter 1 and all of chapter 2. I just want to say welcome once again, everyone. It's I'm so excited. You don't know the half of it. I'm so excited to have all of you here on this forum. This is indeed a gathering of great women. We call ourselves assured women. We call ourselves VSP. What is that? It says vitally strategic partners of Jehovah. And one of these women who partnered with Jehovah is Hannah. Hannah partnered with Jehovah because through her, Samuel was born. And the Bible says that at the time Samuel was born, the word of God was no longer heard on the earth. And God needed someone that would carry his voice. As a matter of fact, 1 Samuel 3.19 tells us very clearly that the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. Praise the Lord. So we are going to look at Hannah. We're going to see how Hannah became God's vital strategic partner. And what I wa want us to, how I want us to quickly look at it is by looking at it from our theme scripture for, um, for the year. Our theme scripture for the year, Fountain of Life Church London's theme scripture for the year is Psalm 41. I've had Psalm 43, but I always look at it starting from verse one. It, we are indeed going to sing a new song. And it says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. Verse two, he lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud, out of the mud. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear, and they will put their trust in God. So when we look at Hannah, we know Hannah's story. We know how she was mocked by her um, co-wife, you know, her, um, Penina, Pen Penina or whatever her name was called. We just know she was mocked. And, you know, something in verse 5 always makes me wonder. That is 1 Samuel 1.5. It says God closed her womb. I don't know why the Bible doesn't tell us why God closed her womb. But you see, it didn't stop her praying. It didn't stop her seeking the face of the Lord. It didn't stop her waiting patiently and praying. We, we meet her 
towards the middle of um, First Samuel chapter one, we meet her in agony. She is praying, she's pouring her heart out to such an extent that the priest thought she was drunk. And you know, the thing that also gets me there is this, that you and me, as long as we are children of the most high God, the Bible says that there's therefore no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. I don't know what the area you're in now that is such that is putting you in the same situation as Hannah was, not, not the childlessness, but whatever it is that brought that emotion of pain an emotion of depression, an emotion of, of, you know, being downcast. God says that he's here right now to turn things around for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You see, God heard her. How, did, how do I know? Eli, I think it's around verse 17 or so, I, I don't remember where, but Eli turned and blessed her after she had explained what she was going through. Eli blessed her and said, go in peace. Let what you have prayed for be yours. You know, one thing I see there is this, and I want to share with, with everyone. As I was preparing, God asked me to say this specifically, that there are a number of women in this forum today who for one reason or the other have not been able to embrace the God's assurance, because in your path is a vessel that God wants to use that you're looking down on. You see, Hannah could have looked down on Eli. We all know that Eli and his sons were not doing what they should be doing. And he, she could have turned around and said to him, who are you? You know, look, at you guys are messing up. I'm here praying. But she didn't do any of that. She looked at him and she said, this is what I'm doing. You know, your, your maidservant is just in agony. And, and when he blessed her, she received it. How do I know? When you read from verse 17 to 19 of 1 Samuel 1, you will find out that after Eli had blessed her, she left that place. The Bible says that she was no longer downcast she had something to eat. And what happened? When she went home, her husband, Elkanah, did not see that depressed woman, the woman that was always crying, the woman who was so sad. He saw a woman who was now looking hopeful, whose face was now looking beautiful. The attraction he had for his wife was rekindled. And what happened? The Bible says that Elkanah made love to his wife. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. So what we see here now is that having done this, having now received and now the, the weight has lifted up from her. Reminds me of verse 2 of our psalm that says, He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mud. Whatever place of depression, whatever valley you're in now, whatever problem that looks to you as if it's unsurmountable, I want to let you know in the mighty name of Jesus, God is lifting you out of that. Amen. He's setting your feet on a rock and giving you a firm place to stand. That's what happened to Hannah after she met with Eli the priest. Now, the one other thing that I want to bring to our attention in line with our Psalm 40 is this. Is that... It tells us in verse 17, I think it is, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're there, verse 19. It says, the Lord <clears throat> remembered her. Hallelujah. The Lord remembered her. Truth is today that Jehovah will remember you for good in the mighty name of Jesus. 
you see, when she went home cheerful, when she went home hopeful, when she went home peaceful, and, and Elkanah made love to his wife. He says, God remembered her. And she got pregnant and she had a son. Hallelujah. Does that sound like putting a new song in my mouth? God put a new song in Hannah's mouth. Praise the Lord. God put a hymn of praise in Hannah's mouth. Hallelujah. Many saw, many saw who Samuel was. They saw him, they walked with him. He was a prophet, he was a judge, he was a priest, he was a kingmaker. Like I said earlier, you know, he was such a person that the Bible says not one word of his fell to the ground. Hallelujah. And I just want to begin to look at the song that um, Hannah sang. And I'm just going to look at four verses. Now, this is now in verse 2. Not verse 2, chapter 2 of First Samuel. And I'm going to look at verses 1 and 2 and verses 8 and 9. And then we will go into the breakout sessions. And then God can then begin to speak to you as you discuss in your groups what God is doing, what God says to you through Hannah. Praise the name of Jesus. It says, Hannah, Hannah's prayer, and that is from 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. It says, then Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord, my horn is lifted high. Someone said that Psalm 3.3 is her favorite psalm. You know, God is your glory and the lifter up of your head. In the Lord, your horn, your strength is lifted high. He says, my mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. Verse 2, there is no one holy like the Lord. There is none besides you, O Lord. There is no rock like her God. Hallelujah. God lifted Hannah from the slime, from the myrrh, from the clay, and placed her feet upon the rock. There is no other rock that you and I can stand on but the rock of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And I'm going to just close out with two um, verses, verses eight and nine. You see, that is why I said that we are all running a race that we are destined to win. He said, verse 8, that is 1 Samuel 2, verse 8. He, God raises the poor from the dust and he lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sits them with princes and has them inherit the throne of honor. No matter where you are at now, God is going to move you into a throne of honor honor in the mighty name of Jesus. It says, for the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. On them he has set the world. Hallelujah. You're part of God's creation. You're part of his foundation. You are a vitally strategic partner of Jehovah. So as we look at Hannah today, how God put a new song in her mouth and caused her to sing out loud, whatever the situation is, you will sing out loud. If you've been singing, you will sing some more in the mighty name of Jesus. So once more, I just welcome you and I just want to say a little prayer. And it's that Father in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every woman on the call today. Father God, I bless you. I worship you. I adore you. I know my Lord and my God that we will receive from your throne of grace as we interact with one another, as we discuss with one another. Father God, I thank you because I know in the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, that you will speak to us and you will take us away from wherever we are. You will place us on a, on a rock. You will put our feet on a firm, solid foundation. You will put a song, <laughs> a song, Amen. a song in our lips. Amen. Father God, we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, my dear friends, my dear 
fellow assured women, my dear fellow vitally strategic partners of Jehovah, we are now going to go into our breakout sessions. There are going to be four of them. So, and we're going to look very closely at what the things that we're going to look at. And, you know, I'll just read them out for you right now. We're going to ask yourselves when you discuss what was God's role in the woman's life, in Hannah's life, and how did she respond? You know, did these actions lead her towards the rich and satisfying life Jesus promised? Just discuss that. Pick one person who is going to come back. And when we all come back together to tell you everything that you um, tell us everything that you discussed. Each group has a maximum of five minutes just because we are mindful of time and, and to give everyone an opportunity to speak. So my sisters, I'm about to do the breakout rooms now. Uh, and then we are going to, so there are going to be four breakout rooms. And it's just going to ask you to join. So it's, once it tells you, just please just join and do, um, uh, what would I say now? Appoint someone who is going to be like, um, going to speak for you in those rooms. All right, the rooms are open and I'll try and tell you, you've got 15 minutes. I'll try and tell you um, when it's, when you ha have the time.
somewhere three eight to nine. Okay, thank you. Okay, who wants to start? Let's start the discussion. Uh, uh, hello, hello, everyone. This Hi. Is, the scripture is from First Samuel one. First Samuel 1. 11. First what? 1 Samuel chapter 1. Yes. To 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 11. So 2, verse 11. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the question. <laughs> Okay, so we just start discussing what we think. <coughs> you all read it, and you know the questions to uh, um, answer are: What was God's role in the woman's life? Okay. How did she respond? Mm -hmm. Did these actions lead her towards the rich and satisfying life Jesus promised? Okay. Okay. So those are the um, things to to answer. All right, guys. Are we ready to crack on? Praise the Lord. You forget about whatever we're supposed to do, or even at the sign of gratitude. Um, I think generally in United Kingdom, sorry, I'm making this comment. I'm, I'm speaking as an experienced minister of God. There's this nine leper syndrome uh, that people come to church or come to ministries are desperate for one particular need. And once those needs have been answered, uh, you don't see them frequently anymore, or they don't even remember to come out to give thanks. Uh, the Bible says that we, we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the testimonies of our mouth. So people sometimes don't even come out to testify what God has done. So the greatest lesson for me as a minister uh, about Anna's life is her consistency in prayer, her persistency in prayer, but also her persistency in fulfilling the covenant that she had with God as an act of thank you to the Lord who granted her the child. May the Lord help us out of a nine letter syndrome. Okay, so um, I think um, we've been able to answer the question of what God's role in the woman's life was. Because the first question was, what was God's role in the woman's life? Now, the second question is, how did she respond? Did these actions lead her towards the rich and satisfying life? She's
Listen to him. Obey these commands. Mm. Yeah. So obedience. Yes. Yeah. I mean, God is all giving and graceful. You listen to him, everything goes well in life. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and actually, I like what you said there, because there's something about obedience that reveals a character of God. And so in her obedience to, to God, she got to know God as someone that is a giver of babies and life and, and, and good things. So, yes, yeah, so obedience and through that, getting to know the character of God. Um, others, what, what do you think was God's role in Hannah's life? I, um, hello everybody. Um, I feel like um, because, because of what she was going through, I think God definitely was like in her heart, but I feel like probably, you know how sometimes you're going through so much, you're praying to God and believing God for something and it hasn't quite happened. So I felt like maybe she was going, committed to, the, the ritual of going to, to Shiloh, but not like no, totally into it. Maybe she was even doing it because, you know, she loved the husband and he always wanted her there, but not like 100% really into it. Mm -hmm. So, but in the background, she knew that, yeah, God is going to answer my prayer one day. It's just that she didn't know what was happening. She wasn't like 100% like happy. She may have even been maybe a bit, um, you know, discouraged every time she has to go that, oh, I have to go through this again and be confronted with my, my uh, co-wife and, you know, see her with all her children and I have nothing and all that. Well, she did it out of, like you said, you know, obedience, even though maybe not like 100% like, oh, in total faith, but still having that thing in her heart that one day, it will be my turn. Mm. I don't know if um, I'm making any points. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think you are. So something about um, God, God rewarding her commitment of going time and time again, even though she hadn't seen the the fruits of her labor almost and yeah. that that sense of committing time and time again and eventually god rewarded that and i think that makes a lot of sense thank you for sharing that and i think as you were talking i was also thinking i said what was god's role in her life and i kind of felt like this whole chapter really kind of going back to what i was saying to lily it really helps us begin to identify the character of god that god can see our needs and god can see our wants and our desires yeah. and that we can possibly it is possible to have this intimate relationship with God where you can ask him for something and he can actually do it. And I think for everybody in Hannah's family, it was an opportunity for God's name to be glorified because they had known her as the barren woman, the one that could not give birth, could not produce fruit. But because of her commitment to God, on to our face you know don't compare what is going on in other people's life you know you we are all being created for a purpose and god will always always fulfill his purpose in our life and that's my take on that hallelujah
Just okay. take it lightly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. And and the last question. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I believe, God, that you had a very interesting and interactive session. And I'm thankful that you're all back with us once again. So welcome, everybody. And, you know, this is the highlight of our afternoon. Praise the name of Jesus. This is the highlight of our afternoon. Um, our senior pastor from... Fountain of Life Church, Mrs. Nomti Odukoya has joined us. Praise the Lord. I want to see virtual hand clappings, everyone. Praise the Lord. So, you know, it's really an awesome thing that she's here with us. And I just want to say a little bit about her. For those of you who don't know her, I don't think there's anyone in this call that doesn't. But if you don't, uh, maybe just for it one or two. I just want to let you know who she is. So she's the wife of our senior pastor and founder of um, Fountain of Life Church. Uh, pastor Nomti Odukoya is an educationist and life coach and she's the associate senior pastor of the Fountain of Life Church in Lagos, Nigeria. And she ministers the message of hope to her congregation and women all around the world which is why she has chosen to come and minister to us today. And we're really, really grateful. She is the founder of a children's foundation, Fundawazi, which means learn and know in her native Zulu language. She is passionate about building wholesome and integrated family life with focus on raising godly and socially responsible children and ministers. Pastor Namti is the author of several books, including some fast-selling children's books. No, don't touch me there. A bully is not a hero. Help, they are fighting again. Boys and girls are different but equal. And children saving the planet. Her ministry and message of hope to children and women span across Nigeria, South Africa, Europe, and United States of America. So with an assured women's gratitude, with a vitally strategic partner um, enthusiasm, let us welcome Pastor Nomti Odukoya. Welcome, man. Welcome. Welcome. So happy to see you. Uh, welcome. We were just going to welcome. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, at this mo moment in time, we're just going to have um, some worship set session just so that our atmosphere is back to. I know we've all been talking and discussing. But now we just want our hearts and our minds just to come down a little bit from all the excitement of saying what our ideas are and just to be ready to receive the word from Pastor Nomti. So I'm going to welcome Robji, who are going to um, bless us with some worship. Hallelujah. I hope you can hear us. Yes. Um, praise God. So, um, we're glad to be here today. And we thank God for an opportunity to worship at the Assured Women's Conference. Um, I just want to start by reading a scripture in Job 37, 14 to 16. And it says, listen to this, Job. Stop and consider God's wonders. Do you know how God controls the clouds and makes his lightning flash? Do you know how the clouds hang poised? Those wonders of him who, was, who has perfect knowledge. 
and it just reminds me that God I never want to lose the wonder of you I always want to be in awe of you I always want to be in wonder at how great you are the great things that you can do that I can't even imagine so we bless you Jesus from the highest of heights to the depths of the sea creations revealing your majesty from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. untamable all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim you are amazing God who sends lightning bolts and tells them where they should go All seas, heavenly storehouses laden with snow. Who imagined the sun and gives source to its light? Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night. None can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. All powerful untamable all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim yeah, you are amazing God we call you incomparable incomparable unchangeable you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same you are amazing God Oh, nothing can compare You're incomparable You're unchangeable You see the depths of my heart And you love me the same You are amazing God Yes, you're amazing God amazing God yeah you are amazing God and you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same oh God you see the mess in my heart but you love me the same You see everything that I do And you love me the same, God You are amazing, God Let the wonder of you Never wonder from me the wonder of you
never wander from me You are amazing God Oh May the wonder of you Pray it today. May the wonder of you never wander from me, cause you are amazing. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Awesome. Awesome. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Rob Chi. That was really awesome. Thank you and God bless you real good. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're just going to now invite the leaders of each group. So we're going to do it in this way, okay? We're going to start with even numbers. So group four will go first, then group two. So please remember group four then group two. After group two, it would then be group one and then group three. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to invite whoever you picked as group four's lead to um, share what you all came up with. Please, you have five minutes, five minutes max. Praise the Lord. We will shut, we'll mute you at five minutes. I'm just going to ask my fellow co-hosts time it once they start and mute. We don't want to keep Pastor Namti waiting too long. Five minutes max. God bless you. And I look forward to hearing everything. God bless. I was in group four, but we did actually pick um, a leader. I wanted to know if I can put Titi Adeyemi on the spot a little bit. I thought her feedback was really, really, really good. Do you mind if I ask you some feedback? Okay. Do you want to like go first? Like you can summarize everything or, or just your overall thoughts. Yeah, okay. that's fine by me. That's okay. Okay. Um, we came up with um different take on um God's um role in Anna's life, and we did compare it to our own life, and. Um, and uh, we all have a purpose in life. We, before we were created, before we were like, you know, um, we've all got different purpose in life. And Hannah had her own purpose in life. Even though she had um, all her enemies who were looking down on her, you, you know, she keep, she still hold on to that faith. And that faith lead her to her, um, en uh, to her enrichment in life because she hold on to her faith. She believe in her God that God would do it. And eventually she got pregnant and gave birth to Samuel. And through Samuel, we had our Lord Jesus Christ. So we, comp we, we, we said we need to hold on to our, to our faith. We need to be steadfast. And one thing that one of the, um, one of the sister mentioned was a vow. If we make a vow to God, we need to make sure we fulfill it. Um, for Christ to like, it's like an exchange. God gives and we have to like, you know, respond back. So if we make a promise to God, we need to make sure that we fulfill our promise in God. Anna made a promise to God that if you give me this child, if you give me this child, I will dedicate the child's life to Christ. And that's what he did. She said no razor will touch his head. He, he, he As soon as, you know, she was, he, the, the child was old enough, he was taken to Shiloh and he dedicated his life to Christ. And through that, we had our Lord Jesus Christ who came through that lineage today. So it is important for each and every one of us that no matter what we are going through, everyone has got a purpose in life. We shouldn't compare what is going on with somebody else's life. You know, hold on to your faith and God will answer you at the right time. And whenever we ask God for anything and we have given a vow, we should make sure that we fulfill our vow, whatever we promise. Christ or God, we need to make sure we fulfill it. So we did compare it to what was going on in, in the world right now. We compare it with um, 
and with what's going on in Nigeria compared to what's going on in individuals' life. So it is important for us, we are women, we are women, we are mothers, to make sure that, you know, we hold on to our faith and we teach our family as well to hold on to their faith. No matter what they are going through in life, God has got a purpose for each and every one of us. Before we were created, God has got a purpose for us. We need to hold on to our faith and believe so that we can get the enrichment of our Lord Jehovah. Um, did I cover everything, Sister Tilayo? Yes, you did a perfect, perfect summary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Ma. Praise God. Thank you so much, Sister Titi. Always such a pleasure to see you. Thank, Thank you. you that was much. really awesome. Can we now have group two, please? Group two. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm representing group two. Uh, what we talked about was... Um, Anna's obedience um, to God, which reveals the character of God. When we are obedient to God, um, God reveals himself through us. And by rewarding our commitment um, from going um, time to time to Shiloh, um, God actually rewarded her. She was obedient. We talked about having intimate relationship with God, which is also an opportunity for God to glorify himself in our life. If we have an I uh, mean. Um, intimate relationship with God. God would definitely glorify himself in our life. And also um, she had the, um, um, Anna had the ability to recognize where the gift came from, that she knew that when she went and did ask for a child, this child actually came from God and she gave back the child to God. So she actually recognized that this gift I've asked for actually came from God. And oh, another thing we talked about was um, being a vessel, um, being used by God. Um, God was actually looking for a vessel to use. And Anna was willing to, I mean, give a vessel to God to use for his kingdom. So by saying that, if you give me this child, I'll give this child back to you. So God was actually looking for a vessel and Anna was there to be the vessel that um, God will use to bring about Samuel. And um, um, yes, she was a willing vessel. I think that's about what we talked about um, in our group. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much, Lady Desh. Thank you, that was really awesome. You see, as we all share together, God gives us great and many insights for us to take away. Praise the Lord. Can we now have group one, please? Group one. Praise the Lord. Who was in breakout group one? I am. Is that uh, Stadiola's group? Group one, yeah, sorry. Okay. Sorry, good afternoon, everyone. So in group one, yeah, we spoke about the fact that Anna prayed. She prayed without season. She had faith. Yes, you know, when they went off, there was a bit of reproach because she was going to get a lesser share of the sacrifice because she was she didn't have children and she felt it at that time. But she turned to God and prayed and she had faith that God was going to answer her. Um, I think one of the things we need to learn from that is what we need to do when we have challenges. The need to call on God, no matter how bad the situation is. And she called on God. And even when Prophet Heli saw her and felt that she was drunk. She was not angry because she knew she was praying for a purpose and she was trusting God to answer her. So she still approached him and responded to him with all humility. I mean, that's something that we need to take away from here. Another thing we discussed was the fact that she redeemed the vows. She redeemed her pledge. Many a times, People make pledges, but redeeming it is a completely different thing. So at the end of the day, when Anna had her son, she gave the son up to the Lord as she had promised. And another very important thing that we spoke about in the group was that she came back to give thanks to God. She was grateful to God for blessing her. And when we were discussing that, it was noted that many a times when we pray and God answers, 
A lot of people don't come out to testify. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Testifying about God's goodness and greatness in our life goes a long way to impact to, to impact Christians around us and even those, of, those around us who are not Christians. So the need to testify was also discussed in the group. Um, I think those were basically the major points that came out of group one. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Jola. Thank you everyone in that group for your rich and meaningful discussions. And I thank God that we have learned. I think one recurring theme is that when we make a vow, at least from all the three we've had so far, we need to be faithful to redeeming that vow. That is something that I've heard very clearly. In addition to us praying, testifying, praise the Lord. So if we could have now the um, fourth group, and that is group three. Group three, please. Um, good evening or good afternoon. Um, from our group, the first um, question in terms of God's role, um, the first point was that, you know, God has... Um, God planned it from the beginning in terms of God shot Anna's womb um, for uh, an appointed time when um, Israel would need uh, a prophet. So it was from the onset, it was uh, God's plan. And point two was God was working with her heart in terms of when she was um, praying, um, God connected with her in terms of it's not the man, her mannerism of prayer, but obviously what was in her heart, her prayer. Um, point three was um, God um, heard her, her cry uh, when she was praying that her mouth wasn't moving, but obviously God is aware of um, her, her crying. Um, point four was um, obviously in terms of God's role, that God confirmed his word um, in, the in, in the terms of um, defining, um, have a defined plan for us as his children, that his plan for us, a plan of good and not of evil, um, which we can all relate to in our, in our current life. Um, moving on to the second question in terms of how did Anna uh, responded? Um, the first point that uh, was shared was that she was consistent in her prayer. She never, she never give, uh, she never give up. She never gave up. She obviously, yeah and yeah, that they went to um, to uh, to pray. Um, she continued. Um, point two, she was emotional. Uh, even though she was crying and obviously probably nagging her husband, but um, that did not change in terms of she basically she changed her view and obviously connected with God. Um, point four was that she believed in the man of God when Eli gave her the word to say that for her to go. I believe it was like first Samuel uh, verse 17 when um, Eli told her to, to, to go that God answered her prayer. So she believed in that. Um, she showed a good example. Um, basically, uh, it was like she was holding her faith in her hand, and um, which is a pure faith in in, in God. Um, then the last, um, bear with me, please. Um, um, yeah, another point was that she did not behave in a foolish manner when um, Eli was asking her a question that, um, that she did not respond in a, in a negative way, like, oh, can you not see me that I'm crying or, um, you know, praying or whatever, but she still respected the man of God. And the last point that we had was um, she believed in the, in the way of God. Um, basically, she had faith and she believed. So that is um, all that we, um, all the points that we discussed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Tai. That was really awesome. That was rich. So thank you all great women of God. Thank you assured women of God. Thank you vitally strategic partners of Jehovah. You have, you know, you have shown that yes, your ears and your heart are in the right place, that you listen to God and that you hear him speak and follow through. Thank you for all this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, nuggets that you've all shown through what you have discussed today. And I believe God that you have learned from each other 
and we've learned from one another. At this point in time now, I'm going to, by God's grace, welcome Pastor Nomti, who is just going to deliver what God has laid in her heart for us uh, now. Pastor Nomti, over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Pastor Ogochi. Thank you for having me and good afternoon to all of you ladies. And thank you so much for those beautiful nuggets. I was blessed here. And uh, actually most of the points you've mentioned are the points that I have in my notes, but like the spirit of God is, is one. So whatever God has said concerning what you have said is what God wants us to hear today. I'm just gonna add a little bit more from what you have already said, especially for God's role in Hannah's life. It was, you have already mentioned that it bec it's because God had given her a purpose, just like all of us, we have a purpose in life. Nobody came here on earth without a purpose. I always make this example, when we were growing up, uh, in fact, it's only when I was older that I realized that people were intimidated by other people's purpose in life. Because when we were growing up, we were told that at birth, everyone is born with, you know how a baby is, with their fists clenched. That means there was something, there's a talent that God has hidden in that, or inside those fists. As you open them up, you are unfolding your purpose. I grew up hearing that even when some will be smart in school, they will tell us we're not the same. Your own purpose will come out. Your own purpose for being on earth will come, you will come out. Some are, were good at sports, like I wasn't good at sports, but I, at least I was good at cheering others because I, I, I like to dance. I, when there's music, I would dance. But the, the main thing is God has given all of us, each and every one of us a purpose. And we should not be intimidated by somebody else's purpose. Now, going back to Hannah and Penina, I love like how Hannah did not pay attention to Penina's uh, annoying habit of, of, of picking on her for not having children. And I was like, what made Anna, Hannah understand? It is like she understood that the purpose that God has given her it is in what she will give birth to. Therefore, that's the very, the very same area that the enemy is going to use to try and distract her. The enemy was using Penina to distract Hannah from focusing, but Hannah kept her cool. She didn't fight Penina. And why was Penina herself, even though we're not talking about Penina, why was she fighting Hannah? I believe Hannah had an understanding that Penina is bleeding. Penina is crying for help. Penina was not loved. She was, uh, but Hannah was the, was the favorite of their husband. But Penina was not loved by her, her husband. No matter the number of children she had, her husband still did not love her. She st he still loved Hannah. You, you, we know the same story about uh, Rebecca and her his sister, Leah. She, Leah kept giving birth to many children, thinking that, she was gonna get, get, gain favor with her husband. How does this relate to us? As women, we know sometimes, uh, I, I don't, you know, that we are here from different, different nationalities, but most times women are always put under pressure to have children, which is a good thing. You know, most women do want to have their own children, but let us look at this closely. We have seen examples of many women in, in the Bible. It was not the reason for being loved. Having children was not the reason for being loved by their husbands. Having girl children or having boy, child, boy children, for example, because they are also, there's also that pressure. The Holy Spirit just led me to talk about this briefly because sometimes there's this pressure. Oh, I only have girls. So maybe I have not established myself in my husband's house. I'm, I'm not gonna be respected because you can only be respected when you have a, a boy child. Or maybe in some, in some cultures, if you don't have a girl, then you have not started having children. It is not, it's got nothing to do with anything. 
It has got something to do with purpose, like we have spoken. All those things, when you hear people disturbing you because you're wa you still waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb, it is because they are sent by the enemy to distract you from your purpose. And when people put you under pressure because of the number of children you have or because of the sex of the children you have, they are being sent by the enemy to distract you from the purpose that God has called you. You are complete the way you are. You are whole. You, are, you, you have been created to fulfill, God, to fulfill God's purpose. We see as we read along the scripture that eventually uh, Hannah's husband took the boy to the temple and the boy ministered. That was what Hannah's purpose was to give birth to this child. You've already mentioned it. And I love how Hannah also was. There came a time when they were going to go to Shiloh as usual, but she asked to stay behind so that she can continue to nurture the boy until the boy is weaned so that then the boy can go and minister to the Lord. She did not stay home because she didn't care about God anymore because God had answered her prayers, which is something that we see many times once God has answered, people will be so uh, on fire for God. They will serve in church. They will, do, they will go at length to do things that will bless humanity. But once God answers their prayers, that's their heart cry. Most times it is not because they, are, they, are really, they really don't care about God. But the devil always uses the opportunity. He will make you feel like, oh my goodness, I don't have time. I can't, if you're in the choir, there's no time for choir practice anymore. I have to take care of my child, which is an honest thing. There is, maybe you have, you have no one to look after your child. But when things like that start to happen, see where you, you are shifting. See where you have drifted and go back to God and say, this blessing you have given me cannot cause me to shift from my position, the position that you have put me in. You have put me in this position. Oh, yes, I have now been promoted. I've been pr praying for, pr for promotion. Oh, yes, now I have been promoted. But now I don't have time to even have my time with God, let alone go into fellowship with the saints. But God said in his word, the word of God says, do not forsake the gathering of the saints. But this blessing is now taking you away from uh, fellowshipping with the other saints. And you have every reason, you, you are justified. Those are the things you have to take to God in prayer. Why have I shifted? Because the devil would always use that opportunity. When the, when the problem comes, you would remember, oh my goodness, this is where I shifted. So we will not wait for the problem to hit, for the wave to hit before we remember our position. We will always remember, God has blessed me, but I will. I was still, God, I know some, some people I, I so admire, they have been promoted right in front of me since I came to Nigeria. And I have seen how they continued uh, uh, what do, uh, serving in church. Um, I just remembered now as I was stammering, I just, remember, I just remembered the president of Tanzania. I heard that he's an usher in his church. He still serves in his church. So if, if you are busy, if you say you are busy, imagine yourself alongside the president of the whole country who still has time to go to, to be an usher. And this might just be out of, I don't know, it's my personal conviction. With the COVID-19 that attacked the, the whole world so hard, I, I, didn't, I didn't read it, my husband read it. He told me that, uh, Tanzania never shut down. That the president, obviously, he, with his faith, he, he refused to shut down and said, no, the enemy is not coming. It was according to his faith. You know what it is? Even COVID-19 was thriving because of fear. There was, the, I believe that there is a virus. It's still there. But it thrives more uh, through fear. It inflicts fear. That's how the devil works anyway. He sends fear through people. But the this president I'm talking about, I, you know, it's, I'm, it's interesting because I haven't even checked his picture, but I just love him so much. I was like, wow, I'm proud of him. 
he decided this is, this might not be right when other people are hearing it. That some people might say, oh, well, but he put people's lives in danger. What if something happened? But be God, I believe God as a child of God. I believe that God honored his faith because he, even though he's a president, he did not forget how he got there. So that's the point that we should never forget how we got to we we get to wherever we are by God's grace. And the grace I also see in Hannah's life is the grace of her husband. She was not oppressed in this relationship. You know, when she said, uh, no, I will not be following you to Shiloh this year. Let me take care of the baby. The husband was free to say, okay, continue as you see fit because she trusted her. She had proved herself, obviously in their relationship because if she was a troublesome woman, her husband will force her. No, we are going to, to, to Shiloh. I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna fall for these, your tricks. She, he saw her not fighting Penina. Nowadays, when somebody is fighting you or a, a situation is fighting you, we have a social media where we fight in a subtle manner. I, I, I believe with all my heart. That's why when I post something, I always say a word of prayer that whatever I'm posting, let it be a blessing to people because it's easy to post something in the flesh. I'm thinking about Hannah now, if they had social media during their time, how would she have reacted? She would not have posted about their squabbles on the internet. Unlike some of us who do that when something is happening in our lives, people know we might not directly say this person did this and that, but we'll go and vent on social media and, and pour our hearts out as if we, are, we have a revelation, but we are fighting somebody, somebody else. But she did not do that. She did not take pictures. Uh, this one, I'm not saying don't take pictures with your husband. I take pictures of my husband and, and I a lot. I like to take pictures, but everything, God searches the heart and he judges the intent of the heart. What is your motivation? for posting what you are posting. Are you posting because you want to be, like they say uh, on Instagram, you want to pepper them, you are a pepper them gang. You want, to, you want to oppress people, you want to show people that, okay, even though I am, I am suffering, there's, a place, there's an area where I'm suffering, but this is, my husband loves me. Click, click, selfie, tomorrow. This is why my husband took me, which is good also. It encourages single people to want to get married when they see us posting uh, pictures. I'm not against that. I'm against the, I'm talking about the motive that Hannah would have posted her pictures with her husband and Penina would not have had time to take pictures with her husband because her job mostly, most likely was just to have sex and make children. But Hannah with the good body, she had not had a child. She would have posted her beautiful body with her husband. She would have posted even the offering, you know, when they were making offering, when before he would make an offering, he would make an offering, uh, Elkanah, and then he would give Penina with her children their, their portion. But when it came to Hannah, he would give her a double portion. The Bible says because he loved her. She would, that double portion, the whole world would have known about it. But when the whole world knows about some things in your life, then the whole world will not be blessed by whatever God is doing in your life. She, at that point, she didn't even know, I believe she didn't know that we were going to read about her. She just focused on the purpose. It's as if she knew that why I'm struggling in this area of having a child is because this is my purpose. It is because many, many women who are being troubled in their, in their marriages, many women who are waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb, many women who don't know what their purpose is, will read about my story and they'll be encouraged. I am so, so happy that we are discussing Hannah. There are so many things that you can talk about, about her. But the last point was she had favor with her husband. So that's the grace I receive for all of us, those who are married, that we will have favor with our husbands. And those who are not married, they will, they will get married to their friends who will have favor with them. Because most times, Sometimes women are not able to flourish in the cause of their gods because the husband, their husbands will be chopping off the leaves. They will be chopping off the leaves of this tree that God has planted in the form of a wife. 
they would not want their wives to shine. But we can see that Elkanah was not intimidated. He said, as you see fit, that's fine. I, whatever if decided, he left her. When the time was right, she, she told him, okay, now we can take the child to the temple. And he did not fight which man would allow you to take your, his son to go and serve God at that young age. But be, I believe it is because of her character. When we have character, when we don't talk too much, even when we are justified to talk, even when we're justified to fight, when we don't fight too much, then God fights for us. He softens the hearts even of people who are hard against us. If this can even apply for us as a country in Nigeria, for those who don't know, we're going through a turmoil. I believe that we need to do dig deep and do a lot of prayers for God to touch those whatever heart is evil, because th this thing is complicated, it's political. We cannot point at one person and say, this is the person who's causing the issue, who's causing the problem in, in Nigeria or in any other country for that matter. But whoever that person is, with our behavior, with our behavior on our knees, God can touch their hearts because the heart of kings is in the in, is in God's hands, and he, he moves their heart wherever he wants to move. Father, we thank you for this word. We pray that it touches each and every one of us in different ways. I pray that whatever I said and whatever the ladies have said here will go a long way in blessing our lives. It will give us ideas. It will give us that creativity that we need to bring glory to your name. Hannah's life brought glory and is still bringing glory to your name. Our lives as well will bring glory to your name in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Kochi. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Namti. That was really wonderful. And, you know, you've just come in a dimension that, you know, through light on so many things. I love the points that you made. I love the first point that's telling women that, you know, your, the love that you have with your husband is not because of children, it's because of who you are, you know, and that is demonstrated as Pastor Nomti gave examples. I remember Sarah, even Sarah, you know, she, it was a long time before she had children and the love Abraham had for her was not because she had children or did not have children. And Pastor Namti mentioned Rachel and also Hannah. So it's just, you know, remembering that we should be assured in our place in our homes, not because of children, but because of the relationship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the other one that um, Pastor Namti said that really touched me is that when God has promoted us, we must remember to serve. There is a place of duty in what he has done for us. We're praying for a husband. God gives us a husband and all of a sudden we can't do any, all the things that we were doing in church before the husband came. You know, we now take a back, back seat. We are praying for a child. We are praying for a job and all these things now take us away. That's not our portion in Jesus name. At least if we tended to that, this message today gives us the has opened, exposed us to that and brought it to our attention. We'll go to God and ask him, Father, help us. And he will help us retrace our steps. And I'm praying that for each and every woman that is here and that you are in a relationship with your husband, that you will find favor with him in the name of Amen. Jesus. You will find favor and God will enable you. You know, how did Pastor Namti say that? He will not, you will not have someone that is cutting down the tree, the leaves of the tree, praise the Lord. For our women who are still believing God for a husband, you, God will place a man in your path that will enable you flourish and will not cut down the leaves of the tree and the flowers that God has given you both, you know, to enjoy. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor Namti. We just thank God for your life. We are grateful that you came and we are praying that the anointing and unction on your life will not diminish in the name of Jesus. God has given Amen. you a purpose and given Amen. you a vision. That vision will only go sharper and sharper in Jesus' name. The resources Amen. and the strength Amen. that you need to execute your vision, you need to succeed in your purpose. 
God will give it to you in Jesus' name. You will not lack anything. When you need help, God will send you more than enough in Jesus' mighty name. Your purpose, your work, the thing that he's called you to do will be easy. Not because it is not hard, but because he has graced you with speed. He has graced you with ease in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, ma'am. We are grateful. I am personally grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, ladies, you know what our next um, session is? Um, I'm going to leave this to Lady Tilayo and Lady Desh. And I think we all know how to use the raise hand um, function. So we're going to have a look at a couple of things right now. And that is, we're going to take some reflective sessions with us. So what we need now, I need just five women, you know, five women want to tell us how does what you have heard about Hannah, how does it apply to you today? How does this story apply to you today? Praise the Lord. And we'll have some another set tell us what is the one thing that you're going to do differently from what you have learned. Praise the name of Jesus. So I'm just going to leave Lady Desh and um, Lady Tilayo to run with this now, okay? So use the raise hand function and they will, um, they will invite you in. Please ensure that what you're saying is not going to be more than 90 seconds so that we can finish on time. Praise the name of Jesus. Hi. <laughs> well, today you have lifted me. I told you I'm in heavens. <laughs> I'm in the clouds. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm there every day, but today is special. <laughs> is that all, Sister Lily? Is there anything else you want to share? Well, um, to be honest with you, Bimmy knows I'm going for a breast uh, cancer operation on Monday. Bimmy knows. Um, but anyway, I know that the angels have blessed me every day. And my operation is going to go well. But today, I'm truly best blessed by all of you. I just hope that all of you will pray for me tomorrow. I'm going to be operated tomorrow. So I just need... That's all. <laughs> okay, we're going to pray for you now, and but we will continue to pray for you tomorrow. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your daughter, Lily. Father God, I bless you for her life. I bless you, Father God, because she knows who you are. Father God, as she goes for this surgery, oh Lord, we thank you for your healing hand over her in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare her healed in the mighty name of Jesus. The surgery will go well and she will return fully healed and cancer free in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you and we Amen. praise in the yes, mighty Lord. name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Sister Bimmy. I can see you raising your hand now. Praise God. One thing I really want to keep on holding on to is as children of God, we need to continue to be hopeful. Hannah was hopeful. That's part of the fact that, you know, she waited this long. She, did, she kept hoping and trusting God, and she prayed, and God answered her prayer. So one thing I'm holding on to is that as children of God, when we desire something from God, we may still not have it, but we should have that hope that whenever we pray, it says when we pray, we should believe our, answer, our prayers are already answered. So we need to continue to be hopeful. There is prayer, there is power in prayer. Continue to be prayerful and continue to trust God. So I'm holding on to that to say hope in the word of God is being fulfilled. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, Sis Bames. Thank you.
I think Mommy D wants to say something. You, you can unmute yourself, please. Okay. Um, thank God for Hannah's life. Hannah's life, in short, shows what I said before, that in everything, God is God of impossibilities. No matter the situation, God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow is over everything and everything is possible with him. Just let us hang it on God. Hold fast on him, no matter the situation. Our God, Heavenly Father, is the God of impossibilities. Thank you. Sure, if um, Sister Yomi is trying to say something. Um, thank you very much, Pastor Ngochi. Um, thank you very much, Pastor Nomti. I like the way Pastor Nomti summarized the aspects of distraction. You know, when things come up, sometimes when we are going through situations, it's just something to distract us from the purpose and the will of God. So I really liked that aspect of it. And We'll definitely hold on to that. Thank you, Pastor Namti. God bless you. Thank you. Do you have anybody else who would like to say something? Okay. Yes. I but, but I don't know where to go to use up my hands. Sorry. That's the unity we can hear you, Ma. Hello. Someone has this whole raised up a hand. And um, Pastor Unity, you can go and then um, Auntie Yinka. Hello. Are they calling me? No, I don't want to speak. Yeah, you oh, can so speak. Unity, please go. Yeah, first... yeah, thank you. Sorry, I wasn't sure. You were going through. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Nomfi, Pastor Goti, and everyone that has contributed this evening. Uh, personally, I just want to listen to everyone. I, want, I personally want to take home with me, in addition to every other thing, is the fact that, you know, with Hannah, when, um, what am I saying now? That her womb was shut. I'm not sure, by God, I'm not sure she knew God shut her womb. We, we are advantaged to know now. I'm not sure God said to her, Hannah, I'm going to shut your womb. So now, you know, chillax. When time comes, I'll open your womb. I just want to encourage us and encourage myself that we might be going through stuff. Let's not allow the enemy just let guilt to just hold us down and make us feel on the mind that, oh, maybe God doesn't love me or maybe because of my ancestor or wanting, wanting, one thing. It could be part of the purpose. It, there could be an appointed time for God to intervene. And like Hannah... I pray that we learn to stay in the place of seeking his face, no matter what. You know, I remember when we were discussing that group, I said, if, for initially, I'm sure she was very emotional because that was not the first year she went to Sheila. She's been going and going and going. Obviously, being a human being, you'll be touched by your mates, you know, mocking you and all sorts. You would be touched. I mean, we're a human being. But that year, for some reasons, because she's committed to God, for some reason, God helped her to change her perception. She was able to like say, you know what? Forget this eating and drinking time. I must come here to meet with God because I just have to settle this with God this year. She made up her mind and she did not undermine the man of God and she received and went her way. So for me, we might be going through different things and seasons. People could be testifying in your presence. A lot of things you are trusting God for and for all that is easy for them. Please don't be left, don't be deceived. It's possible God is holding on to you for a reason because your time has not come. So let's not quit and go and manipulate our testimony and therefore failing our, uh, failing our generation, failing God and failing ourselves. Let's just stay in that place. Let's stay in the place of humility. God will come through. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Unity. Sister Gloria. Okay, let me unmute myself. 
Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Pastor Gochi, for inviting me. Thank you, Mommy D. Thank you, Pastor Remy. I just want to say that um, using myself as an example, I want to encourage all women who waited on the Lord for a few years not to be discouraged. Delayed children are delayed for a purpose. Thank you for instance, Samuel and um, Joseph. You see that all the 11 children Penina had, nobody heard of them. Whether they become drug addicts, whether they become drug addicts, they died, we didn't know. But look at Samuel that was delayed, that the woman was mocked and laughed at what he became. Look at just all the level children of Leah, whatever they became, we did not know. But look at with Joseph. So the women should be encouraged that delay before a purpose, for something to glorify his name. We shouldn't be discouraged, don't be distracted. Have your role model as Hannah, who never fought, who never accused of Penina, who never gossip. The Bible did not tell her that she went around complaining, but she went to Shiloh and poured her heart to God. He's a role model to all of us, and we need to emulate him. Thank you, emulate her, sorry. So thank you for inviting me. Always invite me, I'm here for you. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you so Thank much, you. Sister Gloria. God bless you. We'll now go to Sister Titi. Um, my take from today's um, passage is um, I've got um, three things. Steadfast love, God's everlasting love for us and our faith in him. No matter what we are going through, we need to hold on to faith. Sometimes it could be difficult because the devil will come and whisper in your ears. But if you're a child of God and you believe in God, that God, your God will never fail you. You believe and you have faith. And when the time is right, God will answer your prayer. The other thing is thanksgiving. No matter what we are going through, when we are in pain, we are like so steadfast and we are so prayerful. But once our prayer has been answered, we do our thanksgiving and that is the end of it. You know, we've thanked, God has achieved, you know, we have achieved uh, what we want. But in life, every single day, we should be thanking God. Right now with what is going on in the world, you know, this troubled time that we are living, we should be like thanking God in every aspect of our life. We wake up in the morning, we thank God for today. You know, in what we are going through on our children, in our workplace, you know, it is very important to thank God. Even though you might be a bit low that day, still thank God. Always thank God in every situation you are. And that is my take on it. And my name, which is Titi Lokpe, is like, my name is like every day, just like be thanking God. That's the meaning of my name. So I just take that inspiration from my name that my name wasn't given to me by accident. It was God's purpose in my life that in every situation I go through, I always thank God. Sometimes, you know, no matter how, it might be on in my family life, it might be at work, it might be in the family, no matter the situation I'm going through, I always thank God. And I just want to encourage each and every one of us, no matter what everybody, God knows everyone's heart desire, you know, no matter what we are going through right now, you know, let us be thanking God, no matter how. Even when you're like, you know, in tears, thank God, because God will surely answer your prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Titi. That was really awesome. Praise the Lord. We are fast running out of time, but I'm happy to take just one more person. I'm just asking Lady Desh, is there anyone else with their hands up that wants to um, talk? Um, Sister Debo, I think I saw a hand up. And um, Bola Kolajo. Okay, all right. So Sister Debo and um, Sister Bola Kolajo. So we'll take Sister Debo first and Sister Bola Kolajo and we will then close for the day. Sister Debo, please. You need to unmute yourself, Sister Debo. Just thanking God. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah, I'm just thanking God for the gift of life, for always being there for me, for me. and for my family. And thank you all. 
assured women for your love and support and your prayer towards me. Thank you for calling. Thank you for your love. Love you. Love you too, Sister Devo. God bless you real good. Thank you. Sister Bola Kolaju. Um, good afternoon, Pastor Okochi, Pastor Namti, and all the pastors in the house. I can't show my face because um, my face is not looking very attractive like others. So um, what I want to take home from today's um, uh, meeting, there are just two things. One, consistency and relationship. Um, what I want to say about consistency is Hannah had a vision. So she, she knew that she knew the Lord and she had, she has a vision. She wants a child, but she did not say because she needed a child and stopped going to Shiloh. She was consistent. And in her consistency, she did not break her relationship with God. So she was going to Shiloh every year and she was focused. And the year she had her, her answered prayers, she was not distracted by what the priest was saying, Eli, that thought she was drunk. So she was not listening to the noise. She was focused and she poured out her mind. And that is the relationship base. She kept her relationship with God and she kept it close and kept it to her heart. So those are the two things I'm taking away from um, today's meeting is that as believers, we should consistently be consistent and not look back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Bola. That was also a, an awesome nugget. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord, everyone. I just want to say thank you all for joining us. And, you know, uh, I've been thinking while I was here, how do I say thank you? And I feel that the only way I can say thank you is just to go back to the beginning and begin to speak God's word to all of us. So I just want to say that as you wait patiently for the Lord, as you call out to him in the way Hannah did, that he will turn to you and he will hear your cry. In the mighty name of Jesus, he will bring you out of that place where you have felt, you know, hurt, you have felt depressed and you have felt wounded where you felt your life was sinking and nothing was happening, he'll bring you out and he will place you upon a rock. That rock is himself, praise the Lord. You will land on him. He will give you a safe, safe place to land, praise the Lord. And he will put a new song in your mouth. He will give you a hymn of praise to him, hallelujah. So when people look at you, your very life is a testimony. Hallelujah. When people see you, they cannot but give glory to God who is in heaven. Praise the Lord. I'm praying that as God does this for you, you will walk in the assurance of his love for you. The fact that his grace rests upon you. The fact that God loves you because of him and not because of you. And that assurance will lead you to take your place of purpose and you will fulfill your role as God's vitally strategic partner. Thank you all. Hallelujah. So let all the VSPs in the house say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for coming. I'm just praise going to Lord. invite Daphne now. One thing I want to say is this. We're going to praise show for Lord. just... We're going to, praise the Lord. We're going to show for just... Um, 30 seconds, okay, um, our account details. So we're going to give an offering to the Lord. So please give your offering into the account, praise that you see. Whichever account you want to give your offering into, please do that. 
Um, we have a building fund. So there's a building fund. The SOD code is 204491. And the account number is 1070-7333. So if you want to bless us by giving into the building fund, please do that. If you want to give an offering, please give an offering. The SOD code is the same, 204491. And the account number is 7082. 6049. God bless you as you give. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, at this time now, we're just going to call on Sister Daffy, who is going to just say the closing prayer. Please, I'm going to encourage you, don't go. We just have only five more minutes because this closing prayer is like a covering over all of us. And I just want to encourage us to say a loud amen so that we'll receive in full what God has purposed for us today. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I just want us to open our mouth and begin to thank God for a wonderful time in his presence. The Bible says in everything, we should give thanks to him. Heavenly Father, I want to say thank you for this meeting we've had today. We want to say thank you for all that we have learned today. Lord, we ask, oh God, like you gave Anna answers to our prayers, we ask, Lord, that you give us the desires of our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you give us a double portion also in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, Father, that the grace to be consistent in our prayer life, like Anna did, let it rest on each and every woman present here in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you give us favor from our spouses, oh God. That Lord will be all loved in the name of Jesus. We ask, Father, that you meet us at the point of our need. We thank you for your infallible word today, O oh God. We thank you for the women of God that you have used to bless us. Bless us, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, that you, you fill them up. Every virtue that has gone out of them, that Lord, you will fill in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Above all, Father. We, we, we send all the glory, all the honor to you. We thank you because, Lord, we know we'll never remain the same. We know our lives will never remain the same. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you have done here to do. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. And Amen. I think we're going to see ourselves again in January. Thank you. Thank you. So look out for our, um, our, our postings. So we'll see in January 2021. Sure. May God be saved. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sister Lily, we thank God for your healing. We know Amen. that God has gone ahead and he's done it. God bless you all for coming and thank you so very much.